In this presentation, an intraarticular fracture of the distal radius will be treated with a 2.4 variable angle LCP volar two column distal radius plate. The objectives of this presentation are to identify the clinical indications for pulmonary plating and preoperative planning, to show the principles of the variable angle locking system, the patient position and the approach, the instruments needed, the approach on the bone model, and the reduction and fixation of the fracture. The indications for pulmonary plates in articular fractures are a hyperextended pulmonary fragment and or loss of pulmonary buttress, reconstruction of the radiocarpal joint, collis type fractures, and Smith or reverse Barton's fractures. Be aware that through a pulmonary approach, visualization of the joint surface is not possible as opening of the capsule would lead to some carpal instability. This is an example of a complex distal radius fracture. An external fixator was mounted and a CT scan was performed. It can be seen that some fragments on the pulmonary side could not be reduced under traction. Therefore, a direct approach to the pulmonary fragment is needed. The variable angle locking screw and the standard locking screw are shown. The head of the variable angle locking screw has a rounded shape, whereas the head of the standard locking screw has a conical shape. The design of the plate hole in the head of the plate allows the variable angle locking screw to be inserted up to 15 degrees off axis in all directions. The variable angle locking screw can also be inserted at a fixed angle into the threaded portion of the combi plate holes. The standard locking screw can only be inserted at a fixed angle and only in the threaded portion of the combi plate holes. To drill off-axis holes at the desired angle, the funnel-shaped end of the universal variable angle locking drill guide is used. The drill guide tip is inserted coaxially into the cloverleaf design of the plate hole. The tip of the drill guide must remain fully seated in the plate hole while drilling. The funnel of the drill guide allows the angle of the 1.8mm drill bit to be varied as much as 30 degrees. The fixed angle end of the drill guide only allows the drill bit to follow the nominal trajectory of the locking hole. The plate is available in a left and right version. The instruments needed to insert cortex screws are the 2.4 universal drill guide, the 1.8mm drill bit, the depth gauge, and the short T8 star drive screwdriver shaft and handle. The instruments needed to insert the locking screws are the threaded 2.4 LCP drill sleeve, the 2.4 universal variable angle LCP drill sleeve, the 1.8mm drill bit, the short T8 star drive screwdriver shaft, and the 0.8 Newton meter torque limiting attachment with handle. The 1.25mm plate reduction wire with small stop is useful to hold the plate in position on the bone. The model is placed as shown. The landmarks are the radial styloid and the radial artery of the flexor carpi radialis tendon. A longitudinal incision is made slightly radial to the flexor carpi radialis tendon. The dissection is made between the flexor carpi radialis and the radial artery, exposing the pronator quadratus. The pronator quadratus is detached from the lateral board of the radius and elevated towards the ulna.
For the model, a second retractor can be helpful. The fracture is reduced using the preferred reduction technique. The reduction technique will be fracture specific. The plate is positioned on the extra articular pull mass surface to judge the position of the plate relative to the distal fragment. The first screw to be inserted is a cortex screw applied through the elongated hole in the plate shaft to allow a later adjustment of the plate. The 1.8mm drill bit is used for a 2.4mm locking or cortex screw. The 2mm drill bit would be used for a 2.7mm cortex screw. The depth is measured with the depth gauge. A 2.4mm cortex screw is inserted with the T8 star drive screwdriver. The plate position should be checked under image intensification. The plate position is adjusted if necessary and the screw is retightened. The anatomically pre-contoured plate is used as a reduction template. The articular block is reduced to the plate using either direct pressure or a dorsally placed pad and temporarily fixed in place by two 1.25mm K-wires. If necessary, 1.25mm plate reduction wires can be inserted through selected K-wire holes in the plate to temporarily fix the plate distally. The threaded 2.4 LCP drill sleeve is screwed into the most proximal plate hole and a 1.8mm hole is drilled. The depth of the hole can be read off the scale on the sleeve and the mark on the drill. The drill sleeve is removed and a 2.4mm locking screw of appropriate length is inserted using the short T8 star drive screwdriver shaft and the 0.8Nm torque limiting attachment with handle. To drill off-axis holes at the appropriate angle, the funnel-shaped end of the universal variable angle locking drill guide is used. The funnel allows the angle of the 1.8mm drill bit to be varied as much as 30 degrees. The depth is measured with the depth gauge. The appropriate length locking screw is introduced.
to insert a variable angle locking screw at a fixed angle, the 1.8mm drill bit is used with the fixed angle end of the drill guide. This end of the drill guide only allows the drill bit to follow the trajectory of the locking hole. The depth of the hole can be read directly from the mark on the drill and the scale on the drill guide. In this case, 26mm. The appropriate locking screw is inserted. In order to fix the radial styloid, the most radial screw should be directed distally and radially as needed. The remaining plate holes in the head of the plate are filled as necessary, either at a variable or a fixed angle. The reduction forceps and the K-wires are now removed. In a clinical setting, several X-ray views of the distal radius are taken to ensure correct alignment and reduction. The screw placement and length must also be confirmed. Additional views, such as 10 degrees dorsally tilted, 20 degrees inclined lateral, and 45 degrees pronated oblique, ensure that the distal screws are not in the joint. The one-year follow-up X-rays show anatomical consolidation of the fracture. This presentation has demonstrated the clinical indications for pulmar plating and pre-operative planning, the principles of the variable angle locking system, the patient position and the approach, the instruments needed, the approach on the bone model, and the reduction and fixation of the fracture.